you're here. You're here. I can't believe it. We're together. We're together. You clicked play. Google says you make 35,000 choices a day. And you just made one of those 35,000 choices. And it put us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored and privileged to be in your space and to have you in my space. You know, um, God gives us 168 hours every single week, you guys. It's like free money. And you get to spend it any way that you want. And what you get out of your life is how you spend those 10,800 minutes. And because you, on your own free will that God gave you, you clicked play, you made one of those choices that on how to spend that time. And I will take that very serious and I hold that dear. Thank you so much. Well, what is this? What in the world am I doing? It's called a podcast. And you know, if you were a journalist, you would probably ask me things like, why are you doing this? And where can I find it? And what are your qualifications to do this? And those are all very fair questions. So we'll start first with just some general thoughts. I don't believe you need a degree to speak knowledgeable on a lot of subjects, especially something like common sense choices. You know, um, I don't know if you guys know Malcolm Gladwell. He's written a number of wonderful books. One of them is called Outliers. And there's a chapter in there called um, 10,000 Hours. And he talks about how anybody who puts 10,000 hours into something, that makes them a professional. And so everybody who's listening to me right now, you have 10,000 hours in life. And, you know, when you combine all your rich life experiences with your natural intellect, that's how you get common sense. <laughs> and so, hence the name Common Sense Choices. So, who am I and what's my background? Well, first of all, I, am, I live in Kentucky now. I was raised in southeastern Kentucky. I have three brothers, and we were all raised on our family's dairy farm. We milked Holsteins. Now, for those of you who are bovine challenged, that's the black and white cows that are out there in the field. <laughs> and so what I did not know at the time for those 18 years that I lived on the farm is that I was being given an, an amazing life skills gift and that's called a milking the cow mentality so what is that well when you milk cows for a living if you've ever nursed a baby you kind of understand this concept that regular steady milkings affect milk production and so cows have to be milked at the same time a couple three times a day depending on what rotation you have and so for 18 years with a small family farm if you got sick you kind of got well <laughs> at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. because that's when the cows had to be milked. Now, you might have went to bed in the meantime, but you still had to get up and go to work no matter what. When people died in my family, we buried them in the middle of the day and we went back to work. That doesn't mean we didn't grieve. Of course we grieved, but we grieved, we solved our problems and we got well all at the same time while we were working. And I didn't know it then, but I sure know it now, is that was a wonderful gift. And if you're going to achieve your life's purpose, I contend that you will need a milking the cow attitude. <laughs> well, I went away to college, to Eastern Kentucky University, which is a first-generation college. I don't know if y'all know that or not, but it's a first-generation college. And um, I don't know how I picked my career it was probably kind of like you picked your career I liked home economics when I was in high school I could do a really good 4-H demonstration I was a big 4-H'er I learned how to set a goal do public speaking and win and I suspect a lot of you know how to win and you like to win uh, but anyway that's neither here nor there and so I went away to Eastern Kentucky University and I majored in home economics and became a home economics instructor and from there, I moved to Southern Indiana. And in Southern Indiana, basically, I was teaching during the day. I started teaching in 1975, and I actually taught until 1986. But I was teaching school during the day. It was this really small rural school. 
And then I would wait tables several nights a week at a little place called Rocky Stub Pub in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Some of you might remember that. It was kind of a hole in the wall, but it had like a two-hour waiting list on Saturday night. It was a happening place. And then I would also like, you know, sponsor all the clubs. They would let you sponsor at school. Most of them paid like $100, $125 a year to sponsor them. And then whenever we would have a home game of any kind, they would give you $5 if you would work the game. And that's what I was doing. Why was I doing all of those things? Because I didn't want to be poor. Poor only looks good in the movies. And people say to me all the time, you know, Linda, money doesn't buy happiness. And that's fair. Money doesn't buy happiness. But money buys choices. And if you don't have any money, you don't have any choices or they're very limited. During COVID, if you had money, your kids went to school. When you get old, if you have money, you get to be in one of those assisted living that's kind of like a cruise ship. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that, but I'm ready to sign up. I mean, they give you a schedule every day and a menu every day and activities every day and your every need is taken care of. And if you don't have money, you go to some crappy nursing home. Money doesn't buy happiness, but it buys choices. And so that's why I had all of those jobs. Sometimes when you don't know what you want to be in life, just make a list of what you don't want to be and work in the opposite direction. I didn't want to be poor. So that's why I had three or four jobs. And it was in 1982 that I decided to start a little in-home business. And that quickly allowed me to get rid of my waiting table job and give up all those clubs and work in the door for $5. And that turned into a multi, multi-million dollar organization, both nationally and internationally. And I pursued that career for 38 years. And I just retired for that career. And so anyway, um, so this is a little bit about me. And um, I would say on my tombstone will probably be the word personal responsibility because I'm kind of big on that. And my mantra that I have lived by much of my life is a saying. In fact, that saying is on a seven foot piece of art in my home. And that's why I'm filming this. I'm sitting on my knees and my feet on my couch to do this. I don't want to do this every single time, but because it's uncomfortable, but I wanted to show you this piece of art because this podcast is called Common Sense Choices. And so it's seven feet and it says the following. Let me see, get this. I am where I am by the choices I have made or I have allowed others to make for me. So let's say that together, you and I. I am where I am by the choices I have made or I have allowed others to make for me. Now take a deep cleansing breath because I just smacked you. If you woke up this morning and you weren't excited about your life, don't, don't look at your spouse. You married them. You know, if you woke up this morning and you weren't happy about the direction of your life, don't look at your kids and blame them. Children aren't born to fulfill you. Now, I know that was a little direct and you don't know me very well yet, but it was spoken in love. But they aren't. That's not fair to kids. Children aren't born to fulfill you. And if you woke up this morning and you just dreaded your life, don't blame your boss. You choose to go there. You know, you could have a lot of different jobs right now, <laughs> especially right now. In 2021, you could have about 50 jobs. Everybody's hiring. You know, if you want a different life, you have to make different choices. So we're going to talk a whole lot in the future podcast about choices. There's 35,000 of them that you will make today. And, and you have to understand, little bitty choices add up to the direction your life is going. And you can turn the direction of your life by simply making different choices. So we'll look at all of the influences that have on your choices. The people that you hang out with, the voices in your head, the messages you keep playing in your head, the influences that you allow through social media or media in general, all of that plays in to the choices that you make that you have absolute 100% control over. So, so what is this thing I'm doing? They call it a podcast. It's with video though. Some of you are watching me. So it's an audio and a video. And, um, but 
you know, that kind of puts me in like this little pigeonhole that I really don't want to be in. It's so much more to me. I'm developing a family. I'm developing a community of people. And I want you to be part of it. All right. It's going to be a, like a, a gathering. I don't know how often I'm going to do it. I'm making this up as I go along. I mean, it might be every other day. It might be once a week. It might be once every two weeks. I don't know. But I have to get started in order to figure out where it's going. So anyway, it's going to be this gathering of people. So think of it like a family, like an extended family. And it's going to be a gathering. And I want you to feel at home with me. Okay. And there's going to be some lively discussions, lively discussions. <laughs> I'm not afraid of lively discussion. I'm going to have some wonderful guest speakers. And I hope it's a place that we strive to find common ground. And I hope it's a place that gives you a lot of hope. I want you to end each session with me and time with me. And you're filled with hope and excitement about your own life and the decisions that you can make and the direction you can make to not only make yourself better, but make this world better. It, it needs you right now, if you know what I mean. It needs you. And so, you know, there'll be some, there'll be some hot topics that we talk about, and you probably won't always agree with me, but you don't always agree with your spouse either. You're still married to them. You don't always agree with your kids, but you still love them. And so, guys, we don't have to always agree. And so hopefully you'll find this a very enlightening place, a place you look forward to coming to uh, as time goes on. And guys, last but not least, it's a place that I hope to get to know you better. You know, in the weeks and months and perhaps even years to come, I hope that I'm able to develop a lot of you in a, uh, an acquaintance, friendship, business role together. I'm really looking forward to getting to know more about you. I don't want this just to be me spewing out a bunch of words at you. I want you to feel like you're a part of our conversation. So where can you find these recordings, these podcasts that I'm doing? Well, obviously you found me today and probably it was on your YouTube subscription, which you can subscribe or uh, you're following me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, personal page, page, Facebook, professional page. I'll post them in all of those places. I'll even get a little carrier pigeon. You know? And then what I've also done, and, and this will be like the main hub, like our little home that we all gather in. And it's going to be my website, lindatupin.com. And Tupin is T as in Tom, O-U, P as in Peter, I-N. I've only said that five million times in my life, but lindatupin.com. Now, what's going to be on that web website is there's going to be a place for these recordings, these podcasts, some little blogs, and then you'll have an opportunity to join my team. Now, I don't know what I'm calling it yet because I'm recording this before every decision has been made. So we'll call it Linda's team right now. And basically, it's the people who like really like this and you really want more information. You want more connection. There'll be Zooms, there'll be private chats. Uh, this will be a really kind of inner circle group of people for me. And they'll kind of help me take the direction of the podcast. And it'll be a place that I ask, answer questions with people. And it'll be a much more intimate environment. And so that's going to be on the website. You can find out more information about that as it's developed. And then there will be a tab on my website. I love this tab. I'm, I named it myself. It's called all the stuff you didn't know you needed. <laughs> all the stuff you, have you ever gone in a store and thought, man, I didn't know I needed all this stuff. Well, that's, that would be a tab for that. And it'll be just a fun place that you can buy some fun things that have all my sayings on them. Anyway, and then there's going to be like another tab where you can literally sign up, have a personal private conversation with me. And it's just called common sense advice. You just need some common sense advice about life culture, home, organization, time management, money management, I mean, a million topics. You want some common sense advice, you can sign up right there privately. And the, all the details of how that all happens is right there. And then last but not least, I'm going to be giving you guys some challenges, okay? We ain't just hanging out, okay? We're, we're, we're not just shooting the breeze, guys. We're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose, all right? And so I'll be giving you some challenges and it'll start with the end of this one as well. So probably the more serious question is why am I doing this, okay? 
Um, so there's three reasons, and I'm going to discuss all three of them. The first one is I'm gravely concerned about the American culture. And I'm sure you are too. The second reason is I think everybody needs an antidote to the incredible level of toxicity and damaging program that we have all been exposed to for the past two years. All right. So I want you to consider this podcast a detox program. We might have to develop our own 12 steps to detox ourselves from the level of toxicity that exists out in the world. And the third reason is my best 30 years are ahead of me. So let's just start there. I truly believed when I turned 60 several years ago I, that the best 30 years of my life were ahead of me. I changed my affirmation. I said it every morning when I woke up. I pretended I got to live the last 30 years of my life over. So if you're watching this and you're 50, then just pretend you're 20 and you get to live the last 30 over. All right. If you're 70, just pretend you're 40 and that you get to live the next 30 years over. And when what happens in your brain when, when you change that affirmation is everything changes your health, your eating, your outlook, it's a different energy. And so um, a few years after that, at 65, a couple of years ago, I retired from my career in sales. But, you know, I felt emotionally and physically like I was just kind of getting started. I just figured it out. It took me that long to figure it out. And so, you know, I I, I did what I'm going to ask all of you to do in the future. One of the, your assignments is going to be to examine your gifts. Okay, what are your gifts that you have? Because God has gifted each one of us very differently. And so I looked at what I could bring to the table in the public square. And so I'm good at building relationships and I'm a very loyal person and people tend to stay with me for a really long time. Okay. Um, good communication skills and business skills and just general life skills. Heck, are I taught home ec for a number of years, so I do know a little bit about that. And I feel like I'm good at transferring skills to other people. You know, it's one thing to know something. It's another thing to help another person understand it. So, you know, when I looked at all of this and then I thought, you know, I, I'm a critical thinker. Um, I know how to build confidence in other people. Uh, I tend to look more at life analytically than I do emotionally. I think more like a man than a woman. And, but I balance those two things, I think, fairly well. And I fully understand, like all of you do, that you can't change people. I didn't come on here to change anybody because you can't change another person, nor can you motivate another person. But what you can do is you can inspire them. You can inspire them. And so... Um, I feel like that's my calling right now to inspire people to have common sense and to make common sense choices. And, you know, the world is in need of a whole lot of people right now with some common sense. And I, you can go ahead and say amen every now and then when you're listening to this podcast, because I was raised Southern Baptist and that's kind of important. And, you know, we certainly need a lot of leaders in our, in our country and in our communities that have common sense. And so I want to do what I can to build the confidence, I want to say this loud and clear, I want to do what I can to build the confidence of thousands of you, thousands of you, so that you can take a more active role in your communities, your schools, your governments, your families, and your careers, so that you can live healthier lives. In order for us collectively to change the world, it's going to require some confidence on everybody's part on this call and to have some common sense about the direction that you take. And I want you to march out into the world emotionally mature, physically mature, financially mature, spiritually mature. So we're going to, we're going to attack all of that. And I want to help lead a group of men and women who want to change this world and starts by changing yourself. So that's that part. On the cultural side of it, as I said, I'm sure all of y'all are as concerned as I am. Um, and I just want to do my part to be a voice of reason, a voice of calm, stability, and to bring back good old fashioned common sense and to help others do the same. 
Now, the other thing that I want to say very strongly here is I absolutely, read my lips, look in my eyes, I absolutely refuse to be programmed to hate other people and for them to divide us. I'm not playing that game. I happen to believe in us. I happen to believe in myself. And I don't know what the powers that be are, whether it's the media, whether it's movie stars in Hollywood or sports figures or influencers out here, but there's some sort of power. You can call it by whatever name you want. That's trying to divide us. Everything is about division and that, you know, everybody's wrong and you're right and vice versa. And it's like, I refuse to play that game. And so I'm going to be looking for our similarities and not our differences. And like I said, we may not always agree on here, but I'll always be looking for our similarities and our common ground. And so anyway, so like I said, I believe in us. I believe in you. I believe in the goodness of man and all the goodness of this great nation. That's what I believe. And then the last one, the detox program that we're all engaging in is I've been absolutely horrified, horrified, not by COVID, not by, not by all of that stuff, but by the level of programming that people have been subjected to, especially of those who got addicted to social media feeds and that television set. And so we're going to have a detox program. That's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to get rid of some of that. Okay. So what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to kind of talk about everything, to be quite frank. We're going to start by working on ourselves, okay? We're going to start working on our thoughts. You can't change other people. We've already said that. You have to change yourself. We're going to work on our coping skills. We're going to work on a lot of life skills together. We may, we may have a bunch of sessions on money management, time management, attitude management, organizational tips. Heck, I taught home ec. We could probably go in the kitchen in there. And we're going, to, we're going to talk about running an in-home business. I know a lot about in-home business. I know how to run a business. I know how to raise up leaders. I know how to lead leaders. And so we're going to take control of those 35,000 choices that you have every single day. And we're going to see if we can't make a big old positive difference in this world of ours. Now, I won't be shy. We may talk about culture. We talk about health. We may even talk about politics. Now, I do want to warn you, I'm not going to mention any politician's name, and I encourage you don't do that in the comment section, because I really don't want to open my social media feed and see people's heads exploding. Please don't do that. You're kind of defeating the purpose. We can talk about politics and agendas and, and policies without mentioning politicians' names, okay? It's just, honestly, guys. We could do with about 99% less politics in our life. Do I have an amen on that? Okay, so what do I want from you? What's your part in this arrangement that we're, this little arrangement that we've got? First of all, I want you to comment, all right? Wherever you're watching, YouTube, social media, wherever you're watching, comment. And then I want you to share it. Share it with your friends, share it with your kids, share it, share it with your churches. Share it all over the place. And there will be a link in the text that came with this for you to click. And in addition to finding me in all the places I talked about, you can just get it on email or I can send you a text whenever there's a new release and you can watch it that way. So I would love your email and your text information. So just be sure to click that link and then check out lindatupin.com, our little home, our little hub, and consider joining my team. All right, so what's your first homework assignment, guys? I want you to comment below, first of all, uh, and tell me something about yourself, obviously, but I want you to tell me a choice that you've made, okay, a choice that you have made that you're really proud of recently, maybe in the past day or two or week or two, but what's a choice? Because I want you to start to become very, very aware and you know, cognizant of those 35,000 choices. They make a big difference. For example, I drink about two of these a day. This is tea. I grew up in the South. So I grew up drinking sweet tea, but in my home was someone who drank unsweet tea. So I got tired of making two pots. And so I learned 40, 
40 years ago. Yeah, longer than that, 40 years ago, to drink my tea unsweetened. It's a little bitty, little bitty choice, but think of how much sugar would be in my body now, 47 years later, if I drank two of these a day. So that's what I'm talking about. These 35,000 choices, a lot of them are making a big, big difference. So I want you to comment with a choice that you're really proud of, okay? And then we're going to go to a deeper level. So I want you to grab a notebook, all right? And so I sell one. Yes, I do. You can go over to lindatupin.com. You can get a really cute one. And so you can keep all your homework assignments in there. And so what I want you to do with that assignment is I want you to go, um, go to lindatupin.com, go to stuff. Uh, stuff you didn't know you needed. And if you don't have a notebook or you just want my cute one, just go ahead and get that. And then what I want you to do over the next few days, I want you to write down a few of the choices that you made. So I, like, I want to change your filter right now. And I want you to think before you go to bed tonight, I made that decision. I made that decision. I made a decision to not floss before I went to bed. I made a decision to floss before I went to bed. I made a decision to pick this up and scroll. Biggest waste of your life ever in the mankind. Okay, not that I would have judgment on that. But anyway, okay, so I want you to become cognizant. So in your notebook, write down every day some of the choices that you're becoming aware of. All right. It's almost like a journal, like a diary. And then we'll start doing some things with them. Now, I don't need 35,000. I just need a few each day. All right. So there you have it. Comment. Tell me something you're proud of, a choice that you've made. Go to lindatupin.com. If you don't have a notebook, grab mine and share the heck out of this video. All right. The more, the merrier. And then, um, and then we'll get back together and we'll pick up where we left off and we'll just start working on ourselves first. All right. And last but not least, micro, I know you're out there. And you're my soulmate. You just don't know it yet. Like, you don't know how many times I finish your sentences. Like, you're my soulmate. Like, so many times I post about something and then, like, the next day or two you do, or vice versa. I mean, we think just alike. And so, my goal in life is to have you on my podcast. And then I want you to fall in love with me and marry me. <laughs> All right, you guys, start that music, guys. This show is over. <laughs>